Well, it's just a, I guess it's a girls' scrimmage, right? They have three teams, pretty much, so we're flipping the lines over. I don't actually know my line mates' names. a Dave Bibini kanadai sportúságíróval való találkozón. Azután film és dokumentumfilm részletek következtek egy elhíresült orosz-kanadai meccsből. Akkor folytatjuk a beszélgetést a stúdióból Dávid Bibini. We hope that this weekend Stawa and the sport club put on a good game for us. I will, uh, I will travel as far as I have to for, for a good hockey game. Tehát olyan messze utazik, amennyire Persze a földi határok megengedik. On game day, the church is full. It's the oldest church in Transylvania, built in the 1600s. People in there will be listening to the priest and he'll be talking about hope and possibility and the Transylvanian voice within Romania and how important it is to express that. He'll be saying all those things, but everybody knows what he's really talking about, hockey. Zoltan Nagy's two sons, Istvan and Zoltan Jr., could be any young players on the afternoon of an important game. But unlike most Canadian kids, their nerves are fraught with the weight of 1,100 years of cultural descent. The Nagis have been winning medals since 1980 when Zoltan Sr. competed in Lake Placid to as recently as last year when the brothers played for Romania in the Sea Pool World Championships in Mexico City. On the day of the game, do you think it's better to think about the game or to not think about the game? It's good to think about the game, but uh, just uh, relaxing, just uh, right. quiet. You probably love playing against style because you can be physical, right? Yes. Two months ago, some guy from Yerjo hit my brother, and I go in, and it was a big fight. <laughs> you, did you take care of him? Yes. Yeah. What did you think about uh, your brother stepping in? Did he go do a good job? No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you worry about your sons that they'll get hurt? Yes. Yes. So will you go to the game today? No, no, I don't go. Stawa, it's a Romanian team, and uh, the boy, our town, are uh, Hungarian. The game, uh, it's a political game. Do you think that's good? No, it's not good. No. Okay. What, what does Stawa do to make the crowd angry? They spit. The players? Yes, <laughs> and they show fuck you and something like this uh, when they spit. Spectator said, uh, "Gypsies." Gypsies. <laughs> I feel I, I feel the game, and and when I go in there, uh, I feel and uh, I have nerves too. Today, fans have been in the ring for two hours singing their songs of independence. Under communist rule, the Securitat, Ceausescu's secret police, considered those who moved in groups to be dangerous or suspicious. And as a result, the arena became the only place where Transylvanians could be together without fear of punishment or arrest, let alone speak in their native tongue, let alone sing their songs of liberty. a Bogykáról, és indulhat a csíkszeredei támadás Moldován, Ervin dobta elő a korongot. És a... At Vakar Lajos, the main feature, along with the fans, are the riot police. The threat of violence here is real. In the past, visiting referees have been attacked post-game under suspicion of being paid off by government authorities. 
Fans have been known to jump onto the ice to attack rival players, and Stawa is regularly afforded a police escort out of town, leaving for Bucharest in a hail of rocks and bottles. Inside the rink, the voice of the crowd rises and falls in waves lifted then lowered with every sport club rush. Finally, at 11.45 of the first period, something gives. I'm reminded that as fans, many of us can count on one hand the games that go beyond mere winning and losing, games that represent something greater in our lives. As a follower of the NHL, I've come to expect long evenings of inconsequential play by teams that hold no emotional pull. But here I was, swept away watching a game that's about a culture trying to survive and be heard. Some nights that voice is a stand of fans singing songs of the people, other times it's the crack of lumber across a rival player's arm. And other times it's the sound after the game of the Transylvanian hockey fan in full throat. The game's over and good guys won, I guess. The sport club has defeated Stawa. And uh, they're in there in the five dog singing Hungarian folk songs. Anytime you bring out the accordion, good things are going to happen. Or you know that good things have happened. For nine months of the year, Mongolia's Gobi Desert is one enormous hockey rink. Hundreds of years ago, before Genghis Khan built an empire more vast than even the Romans, nomads played a game on this very ice using branches snapped from trees, batting about a sheep's skull. Generations later, while these branches now bear brand names and the game once known as Mosni Shagai has assumed its more modern name, hockey, the game is still played outdoors in minus 35 degree weather by players with spirit to match the indomitable nature of winter as it exists on this sub-Siberian steppe. Overrun first by the Chinese and then the Russians, it's only now that the residents of Ulan Bator are emerging from under a cloud of communist influence to rediscover their identity. I 
I stand before you on home ice of the Mongolian national hockey team in Ulan Badr. And they're trying to ice the rink. Everybody's raring to go. The kids can't wait to play. It's their week off of school. Uh, but they can only freeze the rink at night because they don't have a, a permit to use the water to freeze this rink, and they can't do it in the daytime. They're afraid they'll get caught, so they must do it under cover of darkness. Who would be the most popular players in Mongolia? Most popular NHL players? When Gretzky, every boy, small, big, all this, every time when Gretzky, yeah. I've always fantasized about what it might be like to slip back in time and meet the greats of early Canadian hockey. But in Ulan Badr, the game is young enough that pioneers like Bobby Arzana are still around to tell you their story. <laughs> Yeah, 17, Wendell Clark. Nice. Perfect. I'm a real Mongolian hockey player now. In every hockey town, there's someone without whom the game would simply not exist. In Mongolia, it's Puji, both a coach and player with the Mongolian national hockey team. Puji has no time for a regular job, which is to say, hockey is his job. Do you remember the first time you saw a hockey game? I'm there all the way about the Nitwa and Tesma, Tadana Stan. Everyone has you think of the doctor's or so, a kid or two. They threw it to me to a motor toast, that's a is not what it. You get bought this and her child, Tata not horn rotten, that to say good shed on what the child, get to go with created fish. He is not what I do. There isn't a single sporting goods store in Ulan Badr, so every October. Puji must put his friend on a train bound for Siberia to buy sticks and equipment for his players. Thank you. 